And if you're looking for a new way to work out, Nine Round Kickboxing Gym has just opened in Granger. Coming up, I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that you learn if you take a class here. Well, I know that when I go to holiday parties, I love all the snacks out. Maybe they have Cheetos or Doritos. Those are so tempting, so I'm always first to grab those. But there are some healthy treats. You guys are stuck in January, but I'm actually all the way in June. I'm relaxing on a boat on the water. It's 80 degrees. Get the visual of that. Leanne, so I talked to fire crews just a little bit ago, and they can't tell me much. They don't know what started this fire. I'm going to step out of the way because I'm going to explain the building. So this is 909 South Michigan Street. Bria, as we can all imagine, this is a rather complicated process. It really is. So it's expected to be a months long inquiry, Bob and Leanne. That could end with the president being removed from office or him getting to stay. So Leanne, what firefighters are telling me is that eight people were in the building at the time of the fire. So again, the fire happened in a business, but there are are also four apartments on top of that business. So those eight people ended up getting out safely, according to firefighters. I've been calling around to police all morning. They've been telling me a lot of accidents and slide offs throughout our area. Just recently, I talked to police. They were reporting a slide off that was on Kern and Beach. No road closures or anything, no injuries. You know what? We've been driving around all morning around Macy, and we've just been finding damages after damages. As you can see behind me, there's this structure here. I can't quite make out what it is. It could be a barn, um, but the roof just ripped off by this tornado. I just can't help but smile. The atmosphere is just great out here. Everyone's energy is just contagious. People are so excited. We have so many Bruins fans. We have so many Blackhawks fans. Do I look different to any of you guys this morning? I know. Well, coming up, I'm going to actually give you an inside look at how the monsters get ready to scare people at Nile Screen Park. The second, what's the middle sound? Uh, Brianna Wallach is a kindergarten teacher at Bittersweet Elementary. Her class is one of the many kindergarten classes across the state undergoing screening for the risk factors of dyslexia. That's all thanks to a new state law. It's a really important law that really benefits all children because um, they really get the intervention and the support that they need from an early age. Wallach has come up with different ways of teaching kids how to read. She incorporates multi-sensory approaches. The South Bend School's literacy coordinator says children with dyslexia learn better while doing activities that help them remember the words rather than just reading them on a piece of paper. They tap out the word and blend it back, or if they dig big motions on the opposite side that they reach, they all kind of help activate the brain. Wallach's approach of having her students spell out words by using magnets or writing words in the sand also works well for some students. It really helps them to um, incorporate all parts of their brain, and uh, it is also engaging too. They like the sand and, and it keeps them engaged. In the brain of a dyslexic child, words are often flipped around, but it's also hard for them to remember what sounds letters make. It's just an area in the brain that works a little bit differently. Um, and so what happens is the phonological part of learning or the, the phonemic awareness is, is difficult. So being able to identify sounds, um, being able to manipulate sounds and recognize them. The law also requires each school to have a specialist that is trained in dyslexia. Becky Richhart currently fills that position for the Penn Harris Madison School District. It, like I said, it's helping us be able to sharpen our curriculum. Um, there's a lot of training for strategies and techniques and curriculum that don't help only students with characteristics of dyslexia, but all of our learners. August 29th, 1981, at 8, 12 a.m., a date and time that the Bridgman community will now remember forever. A memorial dedication was held this morning at that exact time honoring former Michigan State Police Trooper Alan Peterson. He was only 37 years old when he died. I was uh, a very uh, good friend and very good trooper. He was a great guy. He w had an amazing smile, a great sense of humor, um, just very supportive and very sensitive. At the same time, he was really strong. The police department says he technically died in the line of duty, but his story is different. On August 7, 1981, Peterson responded to a train derailment on Lake Street in Bridgman. The train that derailed ended up breaking open and releasing a toxic gas into the air. Peterson was diverting people away from the toxic gas, and people didn't realize it then, but Trooper Peterson made the ultimate sacrifice that day. 22 days later, on August 29th at 8.12 a.m., he died from a severe coughing spasm and heart attack. And he was coughing extremely hard. 
sitting in his recliner. He had asked me if I would go up and get his, his um, sweatsuit because he was really cold also. By the time I got back downstairs, he was gone. He, there was no, no response. It was later determined that coughing attack was caused by the toxic gas. He went into the fire, so to speak, and uh, uh, responded. He put his own personal safety aside to try to keep people from uh, endangering themselves. It wasn't just his fellow troopers, but Peterson's family who also remembered his sacrifice. Bittersweet because it brings back all the memories again and they're hard to to go back to. But uh, again, sweet because it's, it's a really nice thing that the community has done. The town has come together and done this and I'm really grateful that they are remembering my dad as he should be remembered. In Bridgman, I'm Brie Isom, WSBT 22 News. Very powerful man. Concrete Rose is the first ever all Latino cast film to be shot in South Bend. It's the story of a woman who falls in love with a guitar player, but her father doesn't approve. It's inspired by a true story that my father uh, told me when I was very young. Uh, he fell in love with a woman in Vietnam. He was a, he's a Vietnam vet. The couple goes through trials and tribulations to be together. It's just a beautiful story about classes, rich and poor, you know, but love definitely will provide uh, what needs to be a part of this situation. John John Villanueva is the mastermind behind this film. He's always had a creative eye. I've been doing this for 18 years. Me and my brother have been being artists for a very, very, very long time, since we were children, 15 years old. His brother, Damian Villanueva, is also in the film. He plays the villain. I was called by the, uh, my uncle that plays the, the godfather in the scene and uh, to go pick up his daughter because he doesn't want him with this, this certain musician. And Angel Garcia plays the mother of the woman who falls in love with the musician. I'm sneaking her away so that way she can be with the man that she loves. Garcia has been a friend of the Villanueva family for years. Villanueva's daughter, father, and uncle star in the production as well. The crew is made up of 15 people, including producers, cameramen, and dancers. It's a major production from an independent standpoint. Some of the stuff I've done in this area has never been done before, and I'm happy about it. And I'm glad that uh, I was able to do it in South Bend, and I'm glad that I'm able to do it with my family. Concrete Rose is done being filmed, but now Villanueva spends countless hours putting together this movie he hopes will make a difference in the South Bend community. I just want people to see beautiful art. I'm going to be completely honest with you. All that fame and all that stuff that people are trying to push to, I feel like when you set yourself um, expectation on something, expectations don't really always go as a plan. You can do something without having a lot. You know, that there's, a, there's a whole bunch of talent in this world, and I think the, the worst part of it is people waste it. Bree Isom, WSBT 22 News.